All right. So first, I have to say uh, a big thank you to uh, both Adam and Cole for allowing us to kind of guest host their um, chill filtered podcast. So if you guys haven't checked that out, uh, go check them out. Uh, it's a really, really fun uh, podcast. So they do a, do a really nice job. So while they're away uh, on vacation or whatever they're doing, maybe Cole's pouring uh, Adam cocktails or something. I know Adam's got a little uh, cocktail show and stuff now. So I don't know, maybe they're laying on a beach and Cole's just bringing them, pot, bringing him uh, cocktails or something. So that's a possibility. But uh, anyway, so I digress. Um, so first, what I want to do is just kind of uh, introduce ourselves. So again, you know, we're, we're very appreciative that uh, you've allowed us to, to host tonight's uh, the podcast. So first off, uh, my name is Scott. I run the uh, my bourbon journey uh, whiskey review channel uh, different types of whiskeys i do uh, reviews of so pretty straightforward uh, from that standpoint and uh, other two guests tonight are uh, jason from the mash and drum and uh, dan or dusty dan trout and uh, so they're they're going to be uh, joining us tonight for a fantastic uh, sampling of a couple things i'll let dan do a little bit more explaining of these um uh coming up here but uh yeah guys go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves hey guys uh thanks for having me on scott thanks to the guys at chill filtered uh for uh for letting us do this is a lot of fun uh kind of my first actually my yeah it's my first uh podcast i've uh i've kind of done so it's a lot of fun uh my name is jason c uh you can find me on youtube on the mash and drum I do a lot of different whiskey reviews uh whiskey bourbon scotch uh, Irish whiskeys, all the good stuff. So definitely check me out there. You could also check me out on Instagram, the Mash and Drum, and on Twitter at the Mash and D. All right, yeah. Dan, uh, man, you're up. I'm Dusty Dan Trout. Um, so whiskey uh, bourbon enthusiast. Um, you know, re recently, I mean, in the last several years, really got into uh, into into the the bourbon game and. Um, uh, you know, tonight I've brought along two um, two nice dusty samples for for us to try. Um, you know, I, I don't have a channel right now, but uh, the, the guys have kind of tempted me into into creating one here soon. So I'm um, really looking forward to, to doing this tonight, guys. And thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, we're looking forward to this. Um, so both of these samples tonight, uh, they were sent uh, to both Jason and I uh, from Dan. So. We'll kind of get into a little bit of, of both of these. Maybe I'll do a, a description of, of both of them uh, right now. And uh, the first one that we've got is the. Uh, actually, you know what? Let I'm going to let Dan take this because this these are his samples that he provided. So Dan, why don't you uh, kind of explain exactly what it was that you that we all have tonight that we're tasting? Yeah. So um, tonight, uh, the the first one we have is the um, it's a 1981. Jim Beam, uh, it's the the pin bottle. Um, it's actually shaped like a, a bowling pin. Um, comes in uh, at uh, 80, 86, uh, yeah, 86 proof. Um, really nice, uh, really nice on the nose, tax strip and everything on there. So um, our second sample that we have is the 1969 Old Crow Chessman. That's a 10 year. Um, and that also comes in at 86 proof. Yeah. And um, going back, so the Jim Beam, I think that you had indicated that that's a, a six year uh, bourbon, correct? I think that I think that's 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 you had on the bottom. Year, it was 86 proof. Yeah. And then the 69 uh, Old Crow Chessman was uh, was 10 year. Is that is that age stated on the bottle? Do you know? On the, um, it is uh, age shaded on the bottom of the the canner, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah, I know from having this the the old crow I've had in my possession now for a little while, and I've been so tempted to bust into this thing, and I've not even I've smelled it a million times, I think, and it's it's absolutely fantastic. But uh, before we get that far. We're going to start with the uh, the Jim Beam, the bowling pin uh, decanter from 1981, 86 proof. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do like kind of a standard uh, nosing and tasting. And um, hopefully you guys appreciate, um, you know, what we're kind of bringing, you know, our 
I don't say expertise, but you know what it is that we're nosing and tasting of, of both of these. These aren't um, two whiskeys that you have an opportunity to to try and taste very often. So, uh, Dan, thanks again for for sending these. Uh, very very thankful for that. Anytime, guys. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. So why don't we go ahead and we'll kind of get into uh, into the first one. So. The first one, as Dan mentioned before, is the 81 uh, bowling pin decanter, 86 proof, uh, six year uh, bourbon. So what do you have, guys? Well, I'm actually checking out the color on it right now. And you could tell that this is. Um, I, I, I believe this would be non chill filtered. It's a pretty cloudy dram. What do you think? <laughs> it, it it really it really is and and as dan and and you jason you know as you guys know you know these these as we're referring to you know dusty um you know it's it's just a different product you know how they did things back in the day versus how they do things now where everything is more automated this was way more manual and it's just a different product and i don't think until recently I have appreciated the older whiskeys until both Dan and Jason have kind of sent out some of the the prior uh, you know samples, and we've had a chance to really taste some of these. And they've they've thrown Dan and I off, and vice versa. Myself, Jason, everybody, we've all been amazed at kind of what we were nosing, and and didn't always know, or really didn't know at all what it was that we were tasting, and you just get these different aromas that are there. It's just a very unique and different, um, you know, profile. And, you know, me personally, I think I've, 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 I've got a new appreciation for these older whiskeys just because of, of that and really what they, they bring to the table. What, what about you guys? Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. I mean, my, uh, I mean, my view on it is, uh, I mean, really every, almost every dusty that i've that i've tried or had the opportunity to try it's just been so unique and so different from uh, some of the modern stuff that that you try i mean i mean just the nose alone um just completely stands out i know when you know jason had sent the sample of the the ancient age i mean i thought it was a finished you know i thought it was a finished product you know at that time but uh um, you know, come to find out it was, it was an older, it was an older bourbon and just absolutely delicious. Um, and even on the profiles on some of these, you know, you do, you know, sometimes they have that, that musty taste and, uh, sometimes they don't, but you can, you can usually tell the difference or at least I can, um, taste something that's a little bit older as opposed to something that's new. So. Yeah. It, for me, it depends on the, uh, on the dusty, uh, that I'm trying, uh, for me, you know, some of them, like you mentioned, Dan, are definitely a little bit more funky than others. They have a little bit more of a funk to them. Uh, but the thing that I really enjoy about them is, and we're going to dig into these and see if I still get that same note. I find that the older bottlings have a really intense uh, butterscotch or toffee flavor uh, that comes across. And that's what I really love about them. Uh, the one thing that I equate Dusty's to and this is in no way saying it's the same type of flavor profile or the same type of scent. But if you've ever had a, a bourbon from Texas, Texas whiskey has this specific like funk to it that that I could kind of recognize as a Texas bourbon or that it was aged in Texas. And I think there's something about the, these bottles that are aged and that you could taste in the, from the 80s, the 70s that go back that have another type of funk to it that denotes it being you know, that, that dusty, that older type of bourbon created uh, character to it. Um, you know, this is back when they, they can't, you know, they couldn't control every part of the distillation like they can now. Um, obviously there's different technologies, different kinds of cleaning techniques that all play in. Um, it's, you know, you think about it, it's such an elegant spirit that we drink now, you know, being bourbon, uh, especially how it comes out, how it's distilled, how it's aged. Everything about it is just so, um, you know, it's just so controlled, so refined. And it just wasn't like that back then. And they were just making the best bourbon they knew how to make. And some of the stuff that was created back then was just incredible. Yeah, I, I guess I, you know, working off of that, I, I think now of, of these old Dusties as, 
like now a modern day concentrate. It's such a, ref a refined like flavor and profile, both nose and, and on the palate that it's just got this, this extreme like flavor profile. And, and that's one thing that I really, really have, have come to enjoy with these. I know Jason had just kind of compared them to the Texas whiskeys, which as everybody kind of knows is kind of a hot thing as of the recording, you know, of the podcast. Um, and, and rightfully so it's, it's a very different uh, product and it's becoming one of those things where when you nose it and taste it, you know, really early on that you're probably dealing with a Texas whiskey, but anyway, so why don't we, if you guys are ready, why don't we get into, uh, into nosing the, uh, the uh, 81. Uh, yeah, boys, let's, let's, let's go bowling. <laughs> let's go bowling. There we go. Let's go bowling. Let's go bowling. And like you said, Jason, one of the first things you look at is just the color on this thing. And I mean, it's a nice, deep, I'd say almost a copper color, you know? Yeah. yeah. For the, for everybody listening right now, we apologize that you can't see what we're seeing right now, but you don't get many six year bourbons nowadays that have this kind of deep dark dark kind of copper reddish you know hue to it i mean it is super super dark yeah if you ever had uh just it's almost like a you know how they grade maple syrups like dark semi-dark uh light medium this is definitely it, it's almost like maple syrup in the glass and it and the way it sticks and coats the glass it's it um i just i can't wait to taste this stuff yeah, it's um, it does it. it if, if it's not if it's not non chill filtered, um, I would be surprised. I mean, the amount of clingage that this has to the glass is is yeah. I mean, there's some crazy. thick legs on here. Really thick, really thick. So, all right, let's uh, let's nose this bad boy and let's see what uh, what we get. Yeah, so for me, right off the bat, again, as I mentioned earlier with some of these uh, dusties, I am getting that intense butterscotch flavor here but i'm also getting a really beautiful corn sweetness that's still kind of underlying all that very much so yeah you do you're you are hit right away with that um with that butterscotch and there is that underlying kind of like dusty like cornmeal or something that real yeah. sweet like a sweet corn mash or something it's really really nice yeah it's almost like the the you know what's left in a mash ton kind of the leftovers yeah. and that you're smelling it's 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 really incredible but one thing one thing I, I was gonna i haven't smelled this yet and one thing i was gonna be wondering now jim beam has another type of flavor or funk profile that i get normally and that's that's kind of a, a peanut note whether it's a honey roasted peanut something like that and I'm really not getting it in here at all. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't really pick up that peanut note in here. It's uh, yeah. it's not existent for me. This is I, just this is just pure corn caramel butterscotch sweetness. It's. it's I even get a. I even get a bit like as I kind of move it around the glass a little bit, a little bit more of like a like an orange zest. There's a little bit of a kind of a, a orange peel or something that's there on it as well. Yeah, I get some uh, some. Some lighter fruits for sure. Yeah, citrus note. Yeah, I, I mean, you guys get juicy fruit gum. Yeah, I mean, I I, I pick up a sweet vanilla yeah. though too, deep down in there. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, it's vanilla, the vanilla. The vanilla is definitely present, but yeah, that getting like a fresh open pack of juicy fruit gum in there too. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, it's real sweet, like real kind of that fruity sweetness. Yeah, but that intense butterscotch toffee. You know, maybe some vanilla on there too. That that dusty corn. I mean, it's just a just a beautiful nose. Yeah, it 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 really it really is. It really is. All right, why don't we uh, why don't we give her a taste and see what we get? Cheers, guys. All right, Cheers, round the room. Here we go. Cheers, boys. See, for me, I'm ring right away. One of my favorite things to pick up and a bourbon is citrus and I get it right on the sides of my tongue right away. Um, oh. Yeah. That, that juicy fruit character I was just talking about, it just totally lit up my palate. It's that, that is pure citrus and vanilla right there. Right. I mean, first sip right off the bat. That's what I get. 
let me let me ask you something if if you guys you know what it kind of reminded me of in terms of modern day even with the for 86 proof i mean first of all for me in term in addition to what you guys described it had a little bit more a little more heat than i was expecting it to for 86 proof and and maybe and maybe it wasn't even necessarily heat but it was a really nice ride kick it was a real nice ride spice that was there to it it kind of threw me off a little bit i wasn't expecting it to be like that kind of spicy right away but if if you had a to kind of compare this into to something modern day what about the comparison of blanton's gold with that a little bit hmm you know i can almost I can almost agree with you on that, Scotty. Um, I, I I would say it's not the Blanton's was not so much of a citrus for me um, where where this is, but um, I, I can I can agree with you on that though. Yeah, I, I was only thinking I was only thinking that, but also because a little bit of the of the citrus that I always seem to get with Blanton's, no matter what it is, maybe not straight from the barrel as much, just because of how hot that stuff is. Um, but the gold, it kind of reminded me right away. Somehow there was a trigger that made me think of Blanton's gold a little bit with the citrus, that nice spice right away, a little bit of heat. It kind of reminded me of that. But anyway, this is back to this. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. Nice, nice oak, nice oak to it. Yeah, I've kind of yeah. let this, I've kind of let this just sit on my palate a little bit just to kind of see what it does. And a little bit more of the oak flavors are coming out. There's still that set that citrus note that we mentioned, and I, I would agree with you, Scott. If you just let it kind of linger, all of a sudden there's this kind of this little like black pepper rice spice that just kind of sits right on the right on the back of your palate, and it just lingers there. Um, yeah, I'm I'm absolutely loving this. This is really delicious, uh, really delicious pour. Yeah, it got, it's really, really nice and creamy, like a nice creamy mouthfeel, uh, fairly viscous. Um, I'll tell you what this reminds me of, actually. This reminds me a little bit of the uh, Cream of Kentucky, the new one. I haven't had the pleasure of trying any of the Cream of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> um this for uh, for the guys at Chill Filtered, you might want to get the edit button ready because we're about ready to this <laughs> a little bit of a showdown right now. <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding, just kidding. You know, I, I do find this actually. I mean, both of you brought up a really good point. I mean, you know, now that Scott does say Blanton's gold, I mean, it, it in a way it does. But then Jason, you said cream of Kentucky, and that just completely, completely threw me in a different direction here because it's. It's almost an in-between, to be honest with you. Yeah, because Cream of Kentucky has, you know, to me, has, has this effervescent finish on it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm getting this on, um, on this. And, I'm, and Cream of Kentucky became, as I sipped it down, became a little bit more uh, fruit forward. But it definitely started off with that really classic butterscotch note. It had a little bit of a floral quality to it, too. But that kind of diminished over time and became very similar to what's in this glass. Especially with that that tingling, you know, that tingling finish there that's just kind of lingering around. It's it's really, really remarkable. Yeah, it's very, it's very mid to back palette uh flavor profile wise. You yes. get a lot of it, you know, right away the front is kind of gone and then everything is right on the mid to the back of the palette in terms of all the flavor that's that's there. And for me, even this nice kind of creamy vanilla note has kind of come out in it a little bit as as it sits there too. So really, really, uh, yeah, that was that uh, that was that sweet vanilla note. Maybe I was I was picking up on the nose because it's uh, you know, of course you get vanilla in almost every bourbon that you smell, but um, I mean this was like a really sweet vanilla that I was picking up in here, and that's uh, I think it kind of rubbed off on the palate there. Yeah. And I, I would say, you know, finish wise, I would say, you know, it's probably a strong medium, you know, maybe not long, but it's, it's maybe a stronger, you know, medium. I, but, I, yeah. I would say medium, but it's a lingering medium. It is. Yeah. If, if you're not, you're not going to get a big Kentucky hug out of it. You know, it doesn't, you don't really feel it going down, but the way, the way it coats your palate and the way it sticks to the back of the palate and just lingers there, it makes you just want to keep 
drinking and sipping on it more and more and more. It's yeah, yeah it's a really be just a beautiful. I mean, as far as as far as heat, I mean, I would say, I mean, it definitely drinks hotter than eighty six. I might probably say mid nineties yeah. to be honest with you, like a ninety five maybe. Yeah, if I had to guess, like based on the like the first pour, like right away, I would have thought we were into the probably mid nineties. Just I was shocked as to that that's kind of spice and um and and initial heat because normally nowadays as we all know you don't get much or any heat from 86 proof it just no. there's not much to it mm -hmm. but with with that this is kind of an, an interesting thing that if this is non-chill filtered it kind of brings you to the point of where we all talk a lot about you know we enjoy high proof bourbons and and all of that but with this is it is it always high proof bourbon that we enjoy or do we enjoy what a non-chill filtered bourbon does where it allows it to coat the mouth really nicely and keeps all of those those really nice flavors not that we don't enjoy the 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 high proof stuff because we all do but you can see that you know a quality oily viscous bourbon what it really allows it to do even at a lower proof. Yeah, I mean you could you could take that back to uh same brand. If you if you guys had the Jim Beam repeal batch, that's an 86 proof, non-chill filtered Jim Beam bourbon. And it's it, it was one of the more impressive cheaper bottles I've gotten to try over the last couple of years. Um will it blow you away? No. But at the same time that non-chill filtration it really does add a, a huge layer of flavor to it. And Absolutely. it's something that you don't always get. And it's it's just it does. It makes a huge difference. I rather it I rather it be high proof. Um I would actually I would let me let me rephrase this. I I would probably like it at a lower proof if it's non-chill filtered rather than a high proof that is chill filtered. I yeah. agree. I agree hundred percent with that. Absolutely. I think I just think now as as we've all been introduced to more bourbons that are non-chill filtered, I think it's exposing truly what it's allowing the the bourbon or the whiskey to to do to really shine and 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 allow us everybody to enjoy I think really what it is they're they're truly kind of looking for. But all right, so if I go if you guys go back into the nose here. Now that you've taken a couple sips, now I am starting to get a little bit of a Jim a Jim Beam uh, nutty characteristic. Yeah, I, I can I can see that. I can see that a little bit, you know, and and maybe partially what I also get with that kind of that that Jim Beam kind of funky note is is always like a like an old wood note. Yeah, maybe it's kind of what you know, old kind of funky wood note. You know, oh, it's a lot of vanilla now. Yeah, it's gotten it's really yeah, it's really turning into like a roasted vanilla, just intense, intense vanilla notes here. And again, oh, everybody and again, everybody who's listening at home to this, we apologize that you may never have an, the opportunity to try any of these. However, if you do find yourself in a place so far and you see the a bowling pin and it says Jim Beam on it, give it a try. I mean, if if I mean I I, I would say this is worth whatever it is you're willing to pay i mean it's a fantastic pour so that's what it really all comes down to it's really what what it's worth to you you know absolutely yeah i would take i would take this over a lot of new bourbons that have come out lately <laughs> yeah. yeah for for sure i think it's a absolutely fantastic you know product and i wonder back in in 1981 what the what the price of this would have been. I know they did a lot of decanters back in the seventies and eighties. Um, but I, I wonder what, what something like this would have, would have cost. I have, I have no idea what the price point on something like this would have even been. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure of what the price was, um, you know, back then, but like you said, they did put out a lot of decanters, uh, uh, you know, through the seventies. I mean, just, all different kinds of figures and animals and yeah it was it was it was everything i mean i think it was part of you know a marketing thing to get people to buy the whiskey and you know co make make it collectible and you know the flip side was that we we're all looking back now as to really how good 
you know, th those whiskeys that they were making, you know, really, really were. So, yeah. all right. Do we, uh, do we want to move on to the, uh, to the chessmen? Let's do it. All, oh. right. <clears throat> all right. So let me give uh, for everybody listening uh, again, a little bit of a description of that. So this is a 1969 old crow uh, chessmen. So if you're not familiar with what that is, um, you know, do yourself a favor and, and look it up. I mean, first off, it's, it's a very, um, interesting set, but it's basically what it says. These are large, I don't know, maybe between 12 and maybe 18 inches tall, large, uh, chess pieces that were, that were filled with, with, with bourbon. Um, and I believe it was only bourbon. I don't think they were doing any rye or anything different. And it, it was, was all, only bourbon. it was all bourbon. Okay. So yeah, I mean, look it up. It's very interesting. And again, I think this is going to be one of those things where if you are ever anywhere and there's a place that's offering any of the the chessmen as a as a pour, um, I, I would I would encourage you to to give it a give it a try. I mean, again, this is from you know 1969. Again, 86 proof and 10 years old. So you know, back then for you know a bourbon to have a, a 10 year you know age statement you know, said a lot, you know, they did a lot of bottling back then, um, anywhere between five and eight years. So for them to allow these things to age 10 years, wasn't as common as maybe it is, um, you know, today. So, uh, anyway, why don't we, uh, why don't we go ahead and, uh, we'll kind of get into this one guys. Let's do it. I mean, first thing is the, the color. Um, it, lit it literally, it literally looks like if you've ever had Coca Cola go flat on you, and it and it leaves it, it. You have no carbonation, and now it's literally just syrup. That's exactly what this looks like. Yeah, it, I mean, it's honestly probably one of the darkest bourbons I've I've ever seen. To be honest, it's it is. It's probably as dark as I've maybe ever ever seen before yeah, it might be one of the darkest bourbons i've ever laid eyes on it's you know but the now <clears throat> if you compare it to the to the jim beam <clears throat> the jim beam had a if you look through it i mean it looked dusty this is dark but crystal yeah. clear yeah mm -hmm. which is a very interesting contrast yeah very very interesting and we thought we thought the jim beam was dark now when you put it up to this i mean it's it's literally like night and day, pretty close. It's crazy how dark this is. Yeah, it's almost very much like a, like maple syrup looking. I mean, it's really dark like that. Yeah, this is super dark, you know, super dark maple syrup. I mean, yeah. like I said, like flat Coca-Cola. It's crazy yeah. how dark it is. And I'd say as I've moved this in the glass a little bit, the leg, the legs are pretty good. It does kind of cling to the glass fairly well. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I don't know. I can't confirm it whether or not there's any chill filtration to this or not. Being I, this, being this clear for an old bourbon, I would think that this was chill filtered. So in 1969, was that as as common a practice as it is now? I don't know the answer to that, but. I'm I'm kind of curious to know whether or not this is, but I, I agree. And I, I agree with what Jason says is that it is, it's much clearer than the Jim Beam was. So Yeah, and if, and if this is not chill filth, they weren't doing that those type of practices, then it's pretty amazing that it's that clear. Yeah. That clear, yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Enough of gushing over the appearance. Let's nose this thing. <laughs> Oh well, there's that. There's that dusty, yeah, woody, dusty oak. Yeah, this smells like a barrel that's been sitting in the basement of a yeah, <laughs> like of a sitting in like an old dusty basement for years. Wow, it's got. I, mean, I, I pick up. I pick up dark fruits. I pick up toffee. Um, yeah, it's dark. It's dark fruit all day long, and I think as you get into it a little bit more, this this combo of like cherry chocolate kind of starts to come out for me. Yeah. I, you just took the words out of my, my mouth. Cherry chocolate is what I'm getting immediately on the nose. It's a rich, it's like one of those deep, rich, dark chocolates and, and, you know, maybe some 
Luxardo cherry syrup in, yeah. that, in there. Yeah. Very, very much so. Are you guys are you guys picking up the, any toffee at all? Um I'm getting more of a uh well I guess it is considered toffee, like a brown butter. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's very that's very it's interesting. It's extremely it's extremely intense. I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, really jumping out of the glass even more than the Jim Beam bowling pin was. It's just really smacking you right in the right, yeah. in the, right in the old nostrils. It's fantastic, but not a, not much not much heat on the on the nose. And again, you wouldn't expect to. I mean, we're nosing both all both of them eighty six proof. You know, we're not getting a lot of heat you know on yeah. the, off of it, but but I'm just I'm just getting a ton of flavor. You're getting that chocolate and cherry note is actually starting to overpower that that musty dusty scent that we're getting here. Yeah. Another interesting thing I kind of just got, which was really strange. I got this apple pie note to it. I don't know why. It's maybe a little bit of cinnamon kind of coming out in it, but maybe maybe it's like a like a kind of a a, a slightly overcooked pastry crust. That <laughs> could be. It <laughs> could be. Are you guys getting marzipan at all in this? Or <laughs> <laughs> the old marzipan. <laughs> all right. Let's uh Let's give this a try. Yeah, Cheers, I can't wait to taste this stuff. Cheers, Cheers, boys. There we go. Oh, yeah. My, my, my initial thought is I'm, <laughs> I'm absolutely amazed that 86 proof can have like that kind of like heat or, or flavor, like immediately. It's just not anything like you would ever get nowadays with anything 86 proof, not even remotely close. Yeah, the, the first initial reaction I could give here, the first flavors that hit my palate were mm -hmm. I did get a slight hint of chocolate, but then it did it tasted like old dusty oak. But then yeah. the finish now is where this is shining. The, the yes, absolutely. Is, the finish is, is going on and on and on, and now all these other flavors are starting to, to linger around. Wow. It's starting you know, to get one, one of the things that, that I noticed, um, you know, like, like Scott, you pointed out with the Jim Beam was you don't really get a lot of flavor on the front, but you get it towards the mid and the, and the back. This one I got all the way through. And to Jason's point, the finish is just I still I still get it right now. You know, it's uh, – Yeah, um, it's, just, it's just sitting. It's like, it's like it won't go away. It's just sitting yeah. It's it's really it's really nice, and even as I go back and like nose it and taste it, the for me a little bit more of the like maple syrup starts to come out with this thing that that maple syrup sweetness to it. Oh yeah, even back on the nose, some mm -hmm. little maple syrup coming out. Yep. Yeah. And you definitely, I mean, you still get that dusty note. You know, I mean, this thing's been in, in the decanter for years. You know. Yeah, it's it's funky, and and like Jason, like Jason made a point before early on, where. If I would, I would say if you're trying to find anything without having a dusty, to find something modern day that tastes similar to this, Texas whiskey is what what's doing this. Yeah, um, this because this, uh, I mean the front of the palate of this old crow is like it, it does it, it tastes like an old like if you ever walked into an old dusty like a barn. And the yeah. dust that's in there and kind of that the dust and the dirt. I know that doesn't sound enticing, but that's almost kind of what the flavor profile is. But then once it hit once it hits mid palate, you know, then then there's a little bit of burst of that maple cherry note. But then the the best thing about this this glass is the finish. The finish is incredible. I could probably I could probably go upstairs, make myself some food, come back down, it'll still be lingering. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. It's really stuck yeah. to to my tongue here. I mean, it, it really has. Just, I mean, I mean, this one you get on the front, front, the mid, and the finish, and it just it just lingers on. It's it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's it's absolutely absolutely delicious. That's that's for sure. I mean, it's just you know, I, I, I hate to even compare it to to something else. I mean, it's just it really does have its own unique like flavor and this would be one of those this would just be one of those pours that would be you know a not many places anymore are going to have anything like this at all um so if you can if you can find it 
um, you know, the old crow chessmen, you know, do yourself a favor and, you know, I'd say buy yourself a, a pour of this. I mean, I've told myself, you know, there are some bourbons that are meant to stand alone. And I, I think that, um, the 1969 old crow chessmen is, is, is one. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree, you know, and, and if we, if we talk about other, other sources uh, as to, you know, how people obtain these things and stuff nowadays, you know, in terms of values of stuff, you know, these are remaining still kind of for the most part for what you're getting um, afford, affordable. I, I use that, you know, that context kind of loosely um, as far as affordable goes, but, you know, for some of the prices of things nowadays, I, I would say this still remains relatively affordable if you're able to get yourself or if you're able to get your hands on on any of this i mean it's it's just unique and different it's yeah, just the, like anything else the third, the third sip i just took that dustiness is going away a little bit now that that barn dust that old wood funk that oak it's kind of dissipating and now it's becoming a sweet molasses you, you know jason it, it's so funny that you you say that um when I first cracked this guy open, I, I, you know, I poured it back in the glass. I emptied the decanter, and um, when I first, you know, I first drank it, um, it was it was way more um, uh, oaky, and uh, you know, just had it had just such a different profile to it. Um, but now that it's been sitting in glass for a while, and I've I've sipped on it, you know, from time to time, um, it just I could not agree with you more on on that note that you just that you just said right there. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it really was. It's it's very mapley molasses. It it gets sweet. That oak does start to kind of go away a little bit, um, and a lot of that sweetness really starts to come out in it. And yeah, the sweetness oh, is coming through in a big way. That that molasses note now that I'm getting on the front of the palate. You couple that with the finish on this. It's it's one of the most unique and one of the most delicious drams I've ever had. It's really really good. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I would say this is, you know, without knowing immediately or right away, this is one of those those bourbons, I would say, that's really nice to, um, you know, allow it to open up and take your time with it because it yeah. really gives you lots of different layers as you sip on this thing. Because you can see we've all described a lot of different things that we've gotten into the second sip, the third, you know, that we've all picked up these different flavor profiles and that has everything to do with that nice long finish is that it just sits there on that palate and things really start to come come out in this. One. Yeah, I, so. could, I could see a lot of people trying this for the first time and not liking it because that first sip, it is. It's very dusty and very woody and oaky and almost almost like a uh, like a moss on a Rolling Stone type, uh, type vibe to it. But yeah. you give this thing some time, you keep sipping on it, man, the, the yeah. molasses flavors, the maple – that cherry, that chocolate, and the finish on it is just, it's unreal. Yeah, it's its absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it, it would be it would be a pricey pour somewhere for sure. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, in if you want something that's different and unique and you're able to to try this because you're not going to go to many places that, that are A, going to have this. But if somehow along the way in your travels you find this, do yourself a favor and, and get some of them. Now there are different ones. There's, there's different, you know, chess pieces and I, you know, things may vary a little bit, but what we're tasting tonight, um, if, if the others are, are anything remotely like this, um, it, it's absolutely fantastic. So. Mm, man. And the, the color, the, the viscosity is just really holding true. Just, just a unbelievable dram. Thanks for sharing this, Dan. This is uh this is amazing. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very, very thankful. Bring out the best when you when you share with friends. So that's that's what it's all about. So Dan, what's your next uh, what, what's your next dusty um, quest? Yeah. So let me let me let me interrupt real quick. So Dan didn't mention before. So he has kind of a infatuation with older whiskeys. Now he's got some really really good ones, and and. We don't we don't call him Dusty Dan for for nothing. There's a reason he's got that name. So, and he's got some fantastic things. And I I know we Jason and I both know what he's got 
there in his back pocket, not literally, but he's got something <laughs> that maybe, maybe he's willing to, uh, to share with everybody in terms of what it is that he, that he has. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, as far as, um, as far as making a channel, I mean, that would, um, I mean, that I would like to focus on um, something that you don't really see um, on a channel nowadays. Um, but it, it wouldn't just be um, a dusty channel. It would be um, some harder things to find, um, you know, but you know, some of those unique bottles. Um, but but overall, yeah, I, I have uh, – there's just something that just draws me to some of these old these old dusties. You know, I, I do have – um, some older ones, you know, some uh, some old tailors from the 40s, and um, I have some some minis that are from the 60s, 70s, 50s. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's some stuff that I could definitely put on the channel, and and really, uh, you know, I would I would hope to spark some some interest. And in, uh, but we'll we'll see where um we'll see where the dusty trail leads. Uh, good old Dan. <laughs> I think you. Uh, I think you might have left out a uh, an old dusty that you forgot to mention. What was that that you got? No, oh, that was the um, the special old reserve. That was uh, a pre uh, prohibition um, one. It's from uh, nineteen sixteen is when it was barreled. I'm not mistaken, and um, I, I forget when it was bottled. I, I, I don't remember the exact date, but I'm my, my word. Oh, and that's crazy when when you think about that 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 was distilled you know let's see when was prohibition started what 1919 and went to like 1930 roughly is that what it was technically prohibition something like that i i believe that's that's correct if i'm not mistaken so i mean you have there's something that's you know literally a piece of history that's in a bottle something that was distilled prior to prohibition that sat in a in a barrel somewhere that never was destroyed and they bottled it in i yeah what was it wasn't it bottled in like 19 was it bottled in 1916 i I, you know, I, I can't, I can't remember the exact dates on it. It's on yeah. the um, yeah. I, remember, I remember we were talking about it and it was, it was just fascinating. I mean, from that standpoint. So like when you think about that, you know, in itself and you're kind of drinking a, a piece of history and, you know, something that, you know, again, most people will never, never even, you know, see or, or try. So that's, that's pretty cool from somebody who appreciates history. So anyway. Yeah, I mean that's I mean, again that's something that just draws me to uh, some of these old dusties. But uh, the biggest thing is just being able to share it with with people, and uh, you know you, you share your. I, I believe that Freddie Johnson said that you you bring out your good stuff when you when you want to share it with friends, and as as you both know, that's what what I'm all about. So yeah. I mean, especially with, yeah. with, with the he people, also so. added, and uh, you make sure you bring out the good stuff when you're with family, friends, and you have nowhere to be and nowhere to go. That's you it. Go. Yep. That's you, it. Got it. you got it. Um. I have to. So, if you guys had to, uh, if you guys had to pick out of these two, you know which one. I mean, I know it's hard to do, but just for the fun of it, you have to. Which one did you guys like better? Go ahead, Scotty. Um, I mean, I mean, for for me, I mean, I think it was it was easy. I mean, I really, I mean, oh, let me let me back up. I mean, I I appreciate both of them obviously for for what they are, and they're both fantastic. But I mean, if I'm gonna choose one of these, I mean, I think kind of for me, hands down, I mean, the old crow was just so unique and different and a crazy amount of flavor. And, and that's not taking anything away from the Jim Beam because in you know it in itself was fantastic. But just the flavor profile is exactly what I like. I mean, spice, you know, a little bit a little bit of heat that's there, nice long finish. Um, I mean, that's yeah, you, you, you hate to kind of say it, but I mean, it's kind of like a, a perfect pour, you know, from from that standpoint. So, Jason, what would you choose? I would probably give the nose to the Jim Beam, but the the pour and the flavor profile, I would definitely give to the Chessman. Um, the only reason why I'd give the 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 nose to the Jim Beam is because I'm just a huge fan of that intense, dusty butterscotch note with that sweetness. I think the old crow, if you give it time, it gets to that point, and you start getting those really nice sweet flavors that come out of it. 
Um, but in the beginning, you really just kind of taste that old dust and must. But the old chessman, the the flavor profile, when you take a sip of that, and that finish on it is absolutely I, I don't think I'll ever have anything like that 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 tastes like that. That's that was absolutely insane. So it's still lingering. In my last sip, I've been sitting here talking and the chessman, it's still lingering on the back of my palate. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, if I were to, you know, if I were to pick, I, I would actually, I would pick the gym bean on the nose. Um, you know, get get more of those those fruity notes. Like you say, you, you pick up that that butterscotch. Um, uh, where as opposed to the, the chessman, you get um, that that musty, oaky. Um, but on the flavor profile, I will take the old crow nine times out of ten, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean that's that's fine. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with being wrong like you two are. So I mean, that's, that's <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge at all. But uh, yeah, it, it, you know, again, I mean, just just kind of kidding around. It, it is. I mean, everything becomes obviously subjective, and you know, we all smell and taste. You know, a lot of you know different, but kind of the same things. But yeah, it just it's such a unique nose and and flavor profile that you get with these with these older whiskeys. So. You know, again, Dan, thanks for uh, for sharing these with with us and and allowing us to kind of, you know, talk a little bit about these. So, I mean, I hope everybody who, you know, has has been listening or had a chance to, to listen to the podcast, um, you know, kind of really appreciates it or, you know, maybe gives you something that you, you know, kind of want to look or, or hunt for because, I mean, they're they're out there. You can get them and they're not all, um, you know, super unreasonable in terms of you know, price, they are, they are attainable. Um, you know, so, so, you know, with that, you know, thanks for, um, for, uh, Adam and, and Cole for allowing us to, to kind of do this, uh, this podcast tonight. We, uh, we enjoyed filling in for you guys while you, uh, sip cocktails on the beach or whatever it is that you're doing there for a little R and R. So, um, <laughs> before, before we kind of wrap things up, um, why don't you guys go ahead and, and uh, kind of tell everybody where you can, where everybody can can find you if you have a channel, uh, things along those lines. Uh, again, uh, I am Jason C from the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room on YouTube. Uh, you can find me on there. Definitely check out uh, my reviews. I pretty much do about a couple a week. I do Wednesday uh, Wednesday night live streams at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find me on Instagram at the Mash and Drum, and also on Twitter at Mash and D. Um, for, for Dusty Dan here, um, you can find me on some of these guys' channels doing some um, some blind sampling. Um, I've I've done some blind samples on Scott's page and, and Jason's page. Um, Chris from Bourbon Sane. Um, so you can you can find me on there, and uh, hopefully we'll kickstart up a channel here uh, in the near future. So we're we're looking we're looking forward to Dan kind of getting on the uh, YouTube thing. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun with his with his experience and expertise that'll that'll be a fun a fun channel. So yeah, I picture like a logo with Dan kind of walking around like Pigpen from Peanuts. Just wherever he goes, <laughs> he's a trail of dust. Be amazing. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That is like good. That's good. And uh, and again, uh, to, to come in the future for you both. So yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. So, uh, yeah. So my name is Scott. Again, um, I run the My Bourbon Journey uh, Whiskey Review Channel. Um, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at My Bourbon Journey. Uh, same thing through uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I've got a My Bourbon Journey uh, Facebook page. Uh, as far as YouTube goes, I try to release videos on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And when time allows, I try to do uh, Tuesday night live streams. Uh, generally either 7, usually 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So uh, check that out. Check these guys out. Um, you'll you'll see all of us uh, on everybody's uh, uh, channels and stuff. So, so with that being said, and like I say, it's about the journey and not the destination. And Jason, what is it that you say in your channel? <laughs> I say it is not about the whiskey, but the people you share it with. Cheers, guys. Take care. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you.